Hi, this is Angel with a message of love to enlighten your soul. We have a special guest coming with us tonight. Her name is Shamel Williams. She is a licensed marriage family therapist with her own business called Bittersweet Encounters. We're ex ex expounding on mental health awareness and talking about self-care and how important it is to be taking care of ourselves. So, I thank you for being here. And, oh, I'm just so excited. Yay. Thank you. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Bittersweet Encounters. Mm -hmm. I'm about to add you just on, uh, just as soon as it gives me some suggestions. Yeah. And it's being sent. Did you get it? Did you get it? Fantastico. So, Love and Lightens is a social enterprise. We share messages of love to enlighten the soul that is our soul purpose and without of that it is to see love and to cause a global heartwarming through the hi Chanel, through the spoken and written word and so today we're going to be talking about mental health let me switch this up okay um i am in my home and this is going to be very informal so when you guys see my house you see my house all right, and I have a little dog, and she's trying to ask to go out, but she was supposed to do all that beforehand. So, um, <laughs> anyway, Shermel, I am so happy to see you. Hello, Amanda. It's good to see you too. See you, um, Amanda. And we're talking about self care. This is Shermel Williams, licensed marriage family therapist, owner of Bittersweet Encounters, and she is committed to helping people to take care of her, themselves in a healthy way. So Shermel, thank you so much for being on the Love and Lines platform to share a message of love to enlighten souls. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited for tonight. <laughs> Hi, of Noble yeah. Power. Yes, I'm so glad everybody is here and is joining us. It's important whether we're speaking to one or many, that one is many because we are. We touch each other's lives. We're here to be here for one another. So taking care of ourselves is a part of love. It is one of the greatest examples of love that we can do is learning to love ourselves better so that we may be able to love one another better as well. Would you agree? I agree. I agree. I am a hundred percent. I'd like to say a thousand percent uh, a self-love, self-care advocate. So you got an amen from me. <laughs> woo, woo. Anybody else out there that loves to love and loves to love on themselves, send up some hearts for us. Yes, I see you. I see you. Fantastic. <laughs> so, Shamel, please tell me, tell us what is on your heart. What would you like to share tonight? Yeah, so, you know, when you and I, when we talked about this topic, um, we were not in the knowing of, like, the world uh, tragic event that happened a couple of days ago. Um, but mm -hmm. I think tonight is befitting, um, you know, to talk about self-care because mm -hmm. the world is hurting, you know. Um, yes. People are hurting. Um, people are dealing with a lot of mental health and emotional health issues, um, and mm -hmm. challenges and it just sometimes it can seemingly be um, a little bit overwhelming and sometimes it can seem as if this is ever going to end right and yes so, um, you know just in all that's around us in our environments I think that self-care is so vitally important if it has not been important in the past it certainly is important now because mm -hmm. of, of what we are experiencing in our environment and so in order for us to be at our optimal levels um because we still yes. to, we still got to live life there's things that we still you know have to do you know and, and with all due respect to what's going on in the world but we yes. still have to move on and we still have to do things there's responsibilities that we all have and in order for us to be at our optimal level and our optimal, you know, capacity, yes, we gotta love ourselves. We gotta we gotta make sure that we are being attentive to our mental health, to our emotional well being, and mm -hmm. you know, giving us giving us giving ourselves that space 
you know, to really just care on ourselves so that we can be the best version of us. Yes. Yeah. Um, I 100% agree with what you said. I do think that some people have stigmas about mental health, uh, but even about thinking about self-care. There's the, the negative remarks that I hear that self-care is selfish. And um, it's like, it's almost as putting down, caring for yourself is something that people will have shame for. And if you have shame for something, then that's gonna be something you push away from rather than to draw into yourself. Yeah. And um, so can you talk to the people about that a little bit? Yeah, I think you're so right. Um, I, as also, also as a self-love advocate, I am also on a self-journey of like authenticity, right? And I mm -hmm. believe that um, this stigma that we, you know, that we entertain is from a societal view, right? It's like based upon what society tells us. But when you are authentic, you know, you kind of sort of create your own set of beliefs and your own set of rules for yourself so that you can show up in your most authentic way. And so I think one of the things that we have to do is we've got to get away from what society tells us is the way to do things, right? Um, right. And we've got to kind of go with our intuition and, and go with our gut feeling. You know, there are times I'm sure you've experienced it and some people in our audience, you know, where we've gone against the grain of our own selves, you know, um, whether we've over mm -hmm. ourselves and, you know, we've done yes. it for people that we didn't necessarily want to do. Right. But we did it. Anyway. Right. Um, but I think it's time for us to start really um focusing on us and knowing that self-care is not selfish in fact that's right. self care is necessary for us to be able to that's right at our optimal level i like to yes. say you can't pour from an empty cup right that's and right what's happening is a lot of us a lot of our cups are empty and we're pouring mm -hmm. and because we're pouring from an empty cup we get into exhaustion we get into you know, mental fog and mental overload, you know, we can't think straight, you know. Mm -hmm. um, then there's the physical ailments that come along with it, sickness and diseases and all kinds of things, you know, that we open ourselves up to when we're not loving and caring for ourselves. Um, and so, yes. you know, self-care is absolutely, absolutely 100% not selfish, um, but it is actually... Um, it's it should not be an option for any of them really right yeah. i hear in my spirit a woman saying well my duty is my joy mm -hmm. my caring for my family mm -hmm. is the way i care for myself mm -hmm. and i draw from that mm -hmm. but i hear you saying and you tell tell you got to care for yourself sis mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to care for yourself because it's like I shared with one of my clients the other day, you know, she's, she's, um, she has a newborn, you know, and her life revolves around this newborn. And her thing is, I've got to be there for my baby. So she's losing out on sleep. She's losing out on, you know, um, some of the things that she enjoys because she right. wants every second and every moment to her baby. And I said, but I bet you when you are sitting there holding your baby and you are feeding your baby, I, I can also guarantee you that you are not present with that baby. And she said, you're mm. absolutely right. I can, I can see you kind of feeding the baby and your head like propped over. Your eyes are going in and out, you know. So is that really spending time with your baby? Like, is that quality time? Just mm -hmm. present in the body? You know what I mean? And I right, think that right. when we overextend ourselves and we're not um, putting ourselves as a priority, we can be present. We can be physically present, but are we 100% right. present? You know what I mean? And, That's right. And if we're not careful to care for ourselves and give ourselves that rest and that ability to to get mm -hmm. rejuvenated and to revive, you know, we can, right. we can be present in the body, but we can be missing out on so much. Right. Right. Um, right. Where mindfulness, you know, mindfulness activities come in, learning mm -hmm. how to be mindful in the moment, you know, um, practicing mm -hmm. how to really take that space for us, finding safe spaces, 
for us, our own individual selves, to be able to, you know, feel our feelings and our thoughts and our process through them and, you know, and, and just really love on ourselves so that we can be revitalized, so that we can be rejuvenated, so that we can be right. the version that we can be to our, you know, we don't want to show up 80%, 50%, 70%. Right. We want to show up in our, opt in our optimal levels. Right. I, I want to jump in here and say, I think people are now kind of getting to this point of wanting to just figure out how to show up day to day yes. because it's such an overwhelming presence yeah. of grief. Yes. Um, and I think that what we are in a state of mourning, mm -hmm. everybody, whether you're being touched directly or indirectly has been on these three things over the past three years, COVID, mm -hmm the massive graves that came out of that, massive people left the earth. And as, um, as well during that time over the past few years, we've been seeing a number of people passing on naturally. And then we have had unnatural deaths. Yeah. We've had murders and killings and heinous crimes that are hard for us to fathom. Yeah. How can somebody else do this to another person? There, um, and people are having to still go out and uh, buy groceries, mm -hmm. uh, get gas, do day-to-day -day things when they are in a state of grief. Uh, I had a friend that said to me before that when her mother passed away, um, she felt like she just wanted to tell everyone, like, what are you, can't you see that I'm hurting? My mother just died. She felt like they should have been able to see it, but they, they're still, we're still having to show up to our jobs because we probably don't have the time off to do that. Uh, we still have to show up. And I, I have created the t-shirt, the affirmation, expression beats depression. That came from me, from my uh, own experience of learning that I needed to express myself um, as a way of creating boundaries and to her, so that I would not, I noticed that if a lack of expression can cause one, myself or anybody else, to either implode, blow up inside, or to explode. Mm -hmm. And going into a little bit about these school shootings, like the the uh, the, the school shooting of an eighteen year old shooting children who are a little bit younger than themselves. Mm -hmm. This is still it's like such a complex thing. Yeah. But then we also have another eighteen year old who fantasized and went in and. Um, murdered those persons uh, in Buffalo, New York. So we have a lot going on as that we're seeing, we're watching, so we're being touched directly or indirectly. Yes. So can you talk to us about caring for yourself and for others mm -hmm. when you're already in a state of grief? Yeah, the, the number one thing that comes to mind, you know, I don't consider myself to be like, you know, a, a, a high social media user. I'm on social media, um, but I'm not like on there all the time. And I can tell you, right. uh, my heart was heavy all day. And it was because of the little bit, I, I probably only spent a total of 20 minutes on social media and not at one given time. Yes. And just the things that I saw is what contributed to my heavy, my heavy heart, right? It's like an okay. influx of, and yes. I get it, people are hurting, right? I get it. But for me to see that, that's, that also adds to my grief. So the one thing right. that I would say is to limit your social media, you know, um, limit the, this is a time to protect your gates, okay? Mm -hmm. Protect your ear gates, your eye gates, you know, because there's so much information out there and there's so many people that, you know, unfortunately, some people, they, you know, they have good intentions, but then some people are very selfish in their social media activity to where they want the attention on themselves. So they want to be the first yeah. one to post or, you know, they want, you know, they want to gain followers by posting this information. You know, they want to, there's something that they want to gain. And so we have to be careful even in that, that what we're taking in is, we, it, it's a, um, 
a reputable source, you know what I mean? That we're not just taking mm -hmm. in information from, you know, any and everybody, but whatever, right. find you one or two sources that you feel like you can entrust in and tune into that if you want to stay in the know and be in the know mm -hmm. of what's going on. But as far as like just being exposed to the influx of information, um, mm -hmm. it's so very, very, very taxing. And it contributes to yes. people of grief, right? Because what we focus on grows, right? And so if social okay. media is showing, if, if you click on social media and that's all you see, post after post after post after post, mm -hmm. that anxiety is going to grow, right? And so you're yes. focusing on, there's, there's other things going on in the world or even in your life. And those things also can, can, uh, can uh, receive attention as well, right? But right. if you're not focusing on those things, then there's no opportunity for, for those things to grow, right? So I, okay. I, I always recommend, um, even just with my clients with regular anxiety, limit your social media. My clients that have low self-esteem and they're struggling with you know, identity and things like that, limit your social media because social media only posts what it wants to post right um right a lot of it is delusional information it's not the real deal and so here you are trying to chase being uh, or doing something that you see on a post that may not even be real you know or or i get what i hear you saying is it could trigger someone trigger emotions that caused you to have more heaviness Absolutely. So in, in, in opposite, I want to, I love what you said about protecting our gates. Yes. Protecting our gates. Mm -hmm. Now, we got social media with what we want to limit, but what is it that we want to bring in? So we want to we wanna bring in tranquility, and that can, you know, peace. That can look very different for many different people. So, you know, it could be, you know, it could be listening to music, right? It could be mm -hmm. um, lighting candles. It could be mm -hmm. exercising. It could be going out on a walk. It could be cuddling with your dog. It could be sitting and talking with, you know, your community, whether that's family, friends, you know, colleagues, whomever, pastors, whatever. It can mean, you know, just unplugging and maybe reading a book or, yeah. you know, some people like to cook. Whatever that, that space is that you find serenity and tranquility in, that's yes. what you want to focus on. That's what you want to yes. do the more of, right? We'll do um, the more of. Yeah. Yes. You know, those things because you want to foster those things so that it it um it it gets down into your emotions and it starts to lift some of that heaviness, right? And lift right. some of that grief and lift some of that burden um, that you may have in your heart. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I want to share an example. It was last week I had uh, a doctor's appointment and um, it was, I learned really about it at the last minute, but I said, you know, I'll make my effort to go mm -hmm. and um, learned about it at the last minute because it went to my spam email. Mm -hmm. So because it was nobody's fault, I decided to go ahead and go. Well, this day, I, as I'm driving, I go, and the freeway is at a standstill. Mm. It should have been my, my sign to say, call out. Mm. So there, there was a sign. Mm. But I was rather proud of myself because my word said I would go. Mm -hmm. So I called the folks, and I said, well, I'll be there. Can I come later or another day? Mm. So we were scheduled for later. And um, I ended up going all kinds of different ways to get to this appointment. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. get there on time early and they tell me that the doctor canceled afternoon appointments mm. I was so mad I'm pretty sure I was like a dragon with the fire coming out the nostrils All right, mm -hmm. I was livid so I said well what can I do I just I got a shift because what else can I do mm -hmm. so I um I didn't have any music on at first mm -hmm. and I just was driving with the windows down <laughs> coping and then I said all right now time to move on out of this and I put myself on some music on the drive back 
and just pop it. <laughs> because I knew I needed that. That was my way of taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Still, there was mayhem and everything else going on around me. Mm -hmm. But I was able to say at that point in time, I did good self care. I did something to shift the energy. Yes. Yes. Within myself. Yes. From dwelling on it mm -hmm. to letting it go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and the beautiful thing about it is we have that choice, right? We yes. have the choice. And what I love each so even in that, so you mentioned you were popping, right? So that means you were listening to something that was boosting, you know, it was kind of vibrant, right? Yes. So when I talk about protecting your gates, you know, so if you are in a depressive state. You don't want to go listening to sad music, you know? You want to listen to mm -hmm. the upbeat, something that's going to do the opposite of what you're feeling, right? So you don't want to go yes. listen to music, you know, that's going to, that reminds you of, you know, triggers you or reminds you of sad moments or, you know, um, like, for example, if you're going through a breakup, you know, you don't want to go listen to songs that is going to foster those emotions. Mm -hmm. like you want to start to listen to motivational things, things that's going to, yes. you know, pump you up and make you feel good. Good, right so yes the level of like protecting your gates like um i know for me i love hip-hop you know i love west coast music right um mm -hmm. but so i i listen to it but then i'll notice like if i listen to it too much then my some of my mood just starts to shift you know and i'm like okay, okay. i need to do this okay. in moderation you know what I mean? yeah because too much of anything Mm -hmm. It's not good, right? Everything yeah. I believe should be done in moderation, right? Even, okay. They say even drinking too much water is not good for you, right? Um, mm. That's that's what I've heard. Like drinking too much water can 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 be have a negative effect. So, you know, go ahead. I've heard about that for certain medical conditions, mm -hmm. um, but not that it's true for all conditions. But I have heard of that. For certain medical conditions right yeah and or even like fruit you know i had a girlfriend who mm -hmm. you know she was working to lose weight you know and her thing she you know she incorporated like fruits in her diets and she ended up turning diabetic because yeah she didn't know that an excess in fruits and sugar you sugar know, right mm -hmm. breaks down the sugar right. mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. yeah yes everything in moderation is good mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's so that's um the you know the the finding things that you enjoy doing you know and I know it's hard for many of us because you know we're so used to being on the hustle and bustle and on the go you know and doing things and again society you know we've been raised in such a way that we're performance based right. Um, think about yes. school, you know, you get a good, you get your grade based upon how you perform, you know, you get promoted at jobs, you get, right. you know, with yes. performance evaluations. And so we're mm -hmm. taking on this mindset that we've got to perform in order to, you know, to be at a, at a certain level. Right. And, and so yes. this, instead of just being who you are and, and doing the best that you can do. And so some people, they're striving. You know, you make one accomplishment and that's not good enough. So then you go to the next. So you're kind, you're constantly striving for this, for this, this validation, you know, instead of mm -hmm. being validated in who you are. I don't even know how I got on this subject. Oh, I was talking about performance, but, right? Yes, I love it. So... You know, feeling like we have to always be doing something, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, and a part of self-care is is totally the opposite. You know, taking that time to just unplug, taking that time to just, yeah. you know, relax or, you know, shut off your phone. You know, um, mm -hmm. I'm starting to get in the habit of putting D&D &D on my phone, you know, during certain mm -hmm. hours where I, you know, I don't want to, no disrespect to anybody. You know, and That's right. some people may feel disrespected, but D and D is do not disturb for anybody who didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, but you know, sometimes you have to do that just to gain your composure, just to give you yourself. That's right. That That's time right. To you know, to spend with yourself, to gather your thoughts, 
whatever mm -hmm. it may be. And you don't, sometimes you don't even have to have an explanation why you're doing it. You mm -hmm. just do it. Just that's right. That's what you need. Mm -hmm. you need that's right. That's what you need. That's right. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot in this, and um, I want to reflect back to you that I heard you talk about earlier about authenticity, and then as you were speaking about performance based, mm -hmm. uh, I thought about how you know that is constantly looking for approval. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is like almost, um, I feel like I see myself, I see that scene in The Wiz where uh, they be, Eveline passes away and they're coming out of their skin and they start zipping out and they, ah, and they get this new feeling because their true selves can come out. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is that there is, that there is this uh, almost a, when it comes to learning how to care for yourself mm -hmm. and becoming authentic, uh, being very authentically true and honest with yourself and what it is that you need, yeah. that essentially is self, self care, Absolutely. being true for what it is that you need and standing for it without conforming or trying to please someone else mm -hmm. for validation of who you are. Absolutely. And I that's love, what I yes, you're abs I love how you just, I love how you um, worded that. That's absolutely. And don't get me wrong. We're human and we do, we do seek human validation. So we need that. And that's sure. where you create your safe space. You know, that's where yes. you create your Talk community. On it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, collect individuals that you know, that have your best interest at heart, that you know, that is genuine, right? That's going right. to, as, as Sheila, you know, we, we both know Sheila. I don't know if she's still on here, that she'll, you know, give us a booty tap, you know, but it's done. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So you don't need a bunch of yes men around you. You don't need a bunch of people that, you know, it's that don't have your best interest at heart in terms of your growth and development and, you know, and just um, your, authentic, uh, your authenticity. Because part of being authentic is self-discovery, learning what makes you tick, what makes you talk, being able to be expressed mm -hmm. with your emotions, right? Um, yes. And so that's, so we don't need, uh, we don't need to go on Facebook or Instagram to seek validation, right? We, That's right. We need to find our tribe. We need to find our space. We need to find our people. That's right. You know? That's right. That validation from them, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking in my mind about those who are broken, mm -hmm. who may not have um, had a, who may not really have a community for themselves, didn't feel safe in their families. Um, and because they didn't feel safe in their families, they're not feeling safe or unsure about their relationships with their friends and what are friends. And when those core values are broken or never taught from the start and people are grasping at them and my heart goes out to them be because it's, it's hard when, when that happens, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to know. It's not impossible. Your life that you are living is here to be a testimony. Your life is a gift to the world. Mm -hmm. And see yourself as God sees you. You are made in the likeness and the image of God. Therefore, you are beautiful. You are intelligent, you are wise, you are love. And it is then coming into that awareness that we can really build self-love and heal yeah. from, from the damage. Because living is going to cause some damage. I don't care how good or how much money, what house you live in, what kind of car you drive in. Those are so irrelevant. Yeah. I love that there is this um, auto. yes, yeah, a biography. It's a, a movie that I saw called Life is Good, mm -hmm. and it's talking about happiness. Mm -hmm. Like, what makes someone happy? Mm -hmm. And they went to a place in India that's considered the po poorest mm -hmm. of the poorest of poorest. And they found this man who just had the biggest and the brightest smile. And the guy is asking, like, why are you happy? You live in a shanty. You don't have a house. You're making a bed out of 
pretty much nothing. You're sleeping on the floor. And you don't have all of your teeth, I don't think. But, you know, he was happy. Yes. So there is this thing about it's 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 this thing I feel like I'm trying to say, how do I articulate it, Lord, that where we think that happiness is external. Yes. But self-care is really the love that we show to ourselves that we need it. We need this love. From we it. need this love. Yeah. yeah. From that, it flows. I'm going to hold on one sec because I just realized I'm sitting in the dark. Let me turn my light on real quick. Okay. 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 All right. And I want to say shout out to Sheila. I see you. Bye. And I see you, Leslie. Who else we got on here? We got the beautiful Elizabeth, Amanda. And, oh, you guys are so awesome. I'm so glad you're here. You've all been an inspiration. Hello, ladies. Yes, I think they're all ladies, right? <laughs> yes, yes. But we may have some men to look at this later. Yes. So, I know we're probably coming up. I don't have the exact time in front of me because I'm on my phone. Okay. Um, but I had asked you before. And, oh, okay, we got Amber from Little Women Speak. Come on now. <laughs> Bright, brilliant, awesome women and men in the world. And I want everyone to know that you're a child of God. You are intelligent. You are brilliant. You are exactly who you're supposed to be. Whatever melanin of skin you are, you are the God, a, a reflection of God's complexion. Don't let anybody tell you that you're not supposed to look like the way you are. We're not to conform to every being like everybody else. We are to be exactly who we are. Yeah. And the thing is, now what we're doing in society, what I would like to contribute to our conversation about self-care is that as we're going through so much, um, there's a scripture that really impressed me is that Jesus said every plant that um, was not planted by God will be uprooted. Mm -hmm. And that means it's going to come from the root. Mm -hmm. It's going to come up and it's going to probably be painful. Has anybody done any work with gardening? <laughs> I do. I started and those weeds, it can look like a little thing up top, like I'm just gonna pull it, but it has a lot, a lot of resistance. And it can break at the top. It can sometimes come out all together and you got the little root systems. But those weeds are hard to come out. But that's what it's like uh when we've experienced trauma. Yeah. Just so you know, I, I've introduced Shermel as a, a, a licensed marriage family therapist. I, too, have a degree, a master's degree in behavioral science and have worked in social services field as human social services field for years. And I'm a student of Christ. I love the Bible. And it just rings and it rings true for me, integrates so much with life and how to help one another. You know, when you said working with the empty cup, uh, God said, I will give you manna daily. And I saw in the word how when the, the children of the Israelites were out there and didn't have any food, well, well, God would give them manna. It's like God said, I've given to each one what is needed for their household. Mm -hmm. So what I need, God's given to me for the day. What you need is given to you. I just feel like all we got to do is reach out of our tent and say, like, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Put it here, put it here. And then just what God has given to us so that we have enough within us to deal with whatever comes up and stay in a state that that place and have a knowingness within that even though things are rocky, unstable, or my, we get, we get those where our world is rocked. We just got rocked the other day with this news. And sadly, there are still so many shootings, mass shootings going on. This was CNN report. This is the 22nd one mass shooting since the beginning of the year. That's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. And someone else had commented that there's they're happening like every day and it may not reach mass media attention. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for us, I want us to be very conscientious of our state of being mm -hmm. 
and how we're managing our mental, emotional selves so that we do not implode. We don't want to have thoughts of suicide or kill ourselves or to become um, so short that we end up losing it and killing someone else. Yeah, I think um, I think um, for me, I think you know, it's just really what I would want to just share is just in these moments, mm -hmm. you know, really just honor your feelings. You know, take yeah. time just to honor and value what you're feeling. You know, That's if you're feeling sad, honor that. You know, sometimes yeah. you have a problem with being in the moment of being sad. You know, or, or yeah. even angry or whatever it is. And like you said, as long as you're not imploding or, or exploding, but you're honoring your feelings. Maybe you get on the phone and you just have a conversation with one of your safe people and you, you can tell them all about, you know, how angry you are. You can use your choice words, you know, without judgment. The thing is you want to honor them. You want to express how you are feeling, right? That's Another right. safe space is a journal. You know, mm -hmm. that's right. You know, I love it. That's another safe space. If you don't have a person or that person that you feel like you can do that with, put it on paper because it's just you and you, you know, and, and your mm -hmm. higher power, your higher source, you know, that's a trusted person. So journaling also is a safe space for you to be able to process and honor your feelings. When we talk about processing feelings, I notice. A lot of people really don't understand what that means, right? It's not mm. processing it in your head. You're, we're not talking about analyzing and thinking about what you're feeling. Processing your feelings actually means acknowledging this feeling. I'm hurt. Okay. Sitting in that feeling. What made me hurt? You know, what hurt me? You know, and why did it hurt me? I like to say, go through the... Um, Go through the, the W's, the who, the what, the when, the where, and then the how. You know, this is how you kind of get to the root of a thing. You talked about roots, right? This is how we deal with emotions so much on the surface level um, that we don't go deep enough to figure out what it is that we're really feeling and why we're feeling this way. And mm -hmm. it's important to understand why we're feeling this way. I like to say when you have the why, then you can get to the how. But most times we don't even know the why well, or we don't even know what we're feeling. So this is a perfect mm -hmm. opportunity. Self-care is also about self-discovery. There are so many people who don't know what they're feeling. So they yeah. can't even express what they're feeling. Yes. We're, we're, a, we're accustomed to um, the, the secondary feelings of sadness and emotion. I mean, in anger, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, frustration, yeah. you know, we are overwhelmed, but there's a plethora of emotions, other emotions that we, we're not in tune with, you know, feeling disrespected, yeah. feeling rejected, feeling overwhelmed, you know, feeling unloved, you know, feeling mm -hmm. like an outcast, you know, all of right. them, you know, and I think it's important for us to, to dig deep. And so this does require, I do recommend, I'm not just saying this because I am a therapist, because I don't really have room for, for any more um, clients, but I recommend you seeking some professional help if, you, if you're having difficulties with finding out what it is that you're feeling, right? Because you need yeah. that assistance to be able to identify what you're feeling in order to honor and value your true, yes. your true feelings. Uh, you saying the word honor are one of our um, guests here. She says Amber. Uh, she said honor is very important. That resonated with her and uh, others on the line. And we had Elizabeth to ask, um, what are choice words? Choice words. Oh, so, so like I mentioned, like if you're angry. You know, you might want to use some profanity, whatever your choice words are to express your um, your feelings and your emotions. To express it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever your choice, you know, somebody that can hold that space for you. So if you got a potty mouth, you want to make sure you're talking to somebody that won't be offended, you know, by. Right. But whatever words that you want to use or that you feel like you need to use to express your emotions, so that's what choice right. Okay, good. 
Is there anybody else who have any questions or comments? I see you, Sheila. You said love is all you need. <laughs> yes. yes. Hello, Noel. Saya. Oh, oh, thank you for being here. Um, I totally... <laughs> Um, I, I can't see the comments, but I really just feel compelled to say this. We talk about yes. finding a safe space, right? knowing your people. But I also want to talk to us that could be a safe space. How do we be a safe space for others? Because thank you. Did it. Love. You know, a lot of times we think that we need to have a rebuttal, we need to have some sort of advice, Speak on it. Mm -hmm. some sort of opinion, um, yes. something to say in order to provide a safe space. But a lot of times, all people need to, all they need is just to be heard. All they need That's is right. space for them to yes. be able to be expressive in their thoughts, their feelings. And yes. feelings. You know, and so for us, you know, just keep that in mind learning mm -hmm. how to listen that's a form of communication yes it is just be present and to listen and mm -hmm. you know it, it, without feeling the need to have to respond with some sort of advice or some sort of suggestion or what that's happens, right you know so i just really that's right felt to say that I'm glad you did. Um, hi, Moni. Thank you for joining us. I totally 100% agree that the one of the most transformative things that we can do for one another is listen mm -hmm. in a state of, in a place of love. There is a book called Compassionate Listening. Mm -hmm. And that is a good read for those who want to learn how to become a better listener and how to make, teach their children to become better listeners because in that you will also be, learn to become empathetic and see that listening without interrupting or having trying to tell somebody, instead of telling someone, if you can ask a thoughtful, provoking question that can help to lead them on their journey, that's what's going to be more instrumental than having someone to be on the defensive to think about what is it that you're saying or how do I need to interpret your feelings about my feelings. We don't want to put that on anybody. So if anything, listen in a state of love and, and say a, a kind word, if nothing else. And then... Two, if you're aware that they are at a place that is greater than you and may need professional help, there's always the warm lifeline, the Su National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Mm -hmm. um, I read today that 50 to 75% of people who have suicide ideation do not go through with it. They usually just think about it. So it could be a thought of, I'm so frustrated. I'm angry. I I want to kill myself. I want the, they want the pain to end. Yeah. So it's a matter of addressing, talking to the pain, and letting it know the pain is temporary. Mm -hmm. The pain is crushing. Mm -hmm. The pain is probably crushing. But the Bible also says this really wonderful um, scripture says we're not crushed. We're, we may be perplexed. But we're not, we're, I'm going to put it up for y'all. We're, we're not in despair. God is still our hope and our lifeline and our warm line. And until the point in time, it is very frustrating. And actually, thank you, God, it comes to me. A friend of mine who told me that he um, experienced seeing uh, a large number of people dead. He walked, he was walking in a field and came across people who were just dead, dying there. And that the stench, the sight of them had stuck with him all throughout his, uh, his life. And then he shared with me how, um, his own child passed away. Mm. And, you know, I always hear parents say, I'm not a parent, but they say that it's, they don't want to be able to have to bury their own child, mm. but many do. Mm. And as we know, there's parents who are preparing for their own children's death. But what he told me is that, sadly, he said that we all have a, a time to death. And some people will leave naturally 
and some people will leave the work in other unnatural ways, other catastrophes, murder, auto accidents, or the like. And unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. We can do better by not doing that, not perpetuating those behaviors. Um, but I, I want to say that while we're going through grief, what is helping me as I'm going through grief is to say, I got to live up to everything that I'm here to be. I haven't fulfilled it yet. I'm in it now. Okay. I'm in it now. Thank the Lord. But it's better. I want, I don't want to leave anything on the table. I don't want to leave anything on the table. So to those who are listening, I pray that your soul has been encouraged, that this has been a message of love to enlighten your soul, um, that you'll be able to drop something in the line in the comments to tell us what you did get from this. We definitely would like to know so we can continue with it. And if there's other topics that you'd like to hear in the future, um, Shermel is the owner of Bittersweet Encounters. Shermel, um, do you... You tell people more about Bittersweet Encounters or what you're doing, what's coming up for you. Yeah. How can they continue with mental health uh, <laughs> with you or with someone else? Yeah, so um, I am the CEO and founder of Bittersweet Encounters. It's a, a psychotherapy group practice. And we're here in the Inland Empire uh, providing mental health services, um, you know, to the community. And, um, you know, mental health is so important. I'm also a speaker, an inspirational speaker. Um, and so I do speaking engagements. Um, I'm, I'm a Christian. Um, so, you know, um, I'm a lover of Christ. And so I, you know, I do speaking on mental health. I do also speaking, you know, for Christian communities or anything like that. Um, I, I want to leave this resource for any of you out there. Um, I know mental health is, is right now is on a high demand. It's a great demand. Um, and, you know, it's important. It's important um, for us to seek out mental health. And I want to say that, you know, seeing a therapist, there's no weakness in that. You know, um, it's just like when you go to the doctor, when you have you know, some concerns, um, you know, with a medical doctor, you, you go and seek your medical doctor. It's the same, it's the same concept with our mental health. And so, um, but psychology today, um, dot com is, uh, it's a resource of, uh, all types of mental health professions. Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's huge. Um, and so what I love about it is you can filter, you can filter by, gender, you can filter by uh, race, you can filter by, you know, symptoms or things that you are struggling or, you know, having challenges with, you can filter by insurance. Um, and so you can really find, you know, and then there's bios on there. So you can kind of sift through and read some of the bios. And I will say this, when you are finding if you if you are looking for a therapist, um, be sure that you just don't take, you just don't take anybody, you know, you want somebody shop, mm -hmm. you know, interview your therapist, you know, make sure that yeah. the bio is in alignment with your values and things like that, because mm -hmm. this is a relationship that you are, um, that you are creating, it's a, it's a relationship. And so you want to make sure that this person is good for you. And, and, and I'm sure they, would want the same, you know, that it's a good fit for them as well. So um, Psychology Today, that's a good resource for you to be able to find um, mental health professions and mental health services um, for, yeah. you know, for anyone that you may know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. I, I, this was um, on my heart. I don't want to leave without saying trust the love of of strangers trust the love of love that love will lead you and knit you with people who are going to love on you i did not know shermel until the beginning of this year okay we met in a group but we're like-minded like-hearted and that became my prayer i'm one who's dealt with depression and suicidal ideation i'm so thankful that i'm still here that god sent my aunt to call me at the time where i was just ready to check out. And I have a little love pup who her eyes just said, that stopped me. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful to be here and to see how much God has uh, done 
with me, for me, to see how much my life has grown, the peace and the joy that I have. And I'm still working on it, y'all. I'm still working on not being depressed and managing anxiety and everything and having better boundaries and all that stuff. It's all matters. And coping with childhood drama, adult drama, you know, love and loss. It's all of those things. But I have more joy, more peace, more courage, more hope, more love than I ever had before. And it is so worth it. Go to therapy if you don't have good synergy with that person. Itch nay ouch But also don't be a person who wants tickly ears to hear everything that you want to hear. You're going to be challenged in relationships, and that's going to help you to grow. And so the more you can become more of what you want, the more you'll see it as well. So I hope this has been a, a message of love that has enlightened your soul, that you can take some, some tools from here. I got here um, when I asked. I want to go back before we leave, ask for any comp comments. Got cultural competency is a big one for me. They need to be gay-friendly. Oh, which therapist? Yes. You got to have that good energy and vibe because if it ain't there, it ain't there. All right. I know I had to leave a therapist. Uh, there's no weakness in seeing a therapist. I think seeing a therapist is one of the most courageous things you can do because you're confronting yourself. You're confronting and saying, oh, oh, I need to be better. I want to go out and help everybody else. But this is my time to take that and love on me. Love on yourselves, people. Love on yourself. Take some hot baths. Um, take a walk. Write out a list of things that you can do to help yourself when you come get into uh, a funk or upset, whatever. Write it out. Post it on your on your refrigerator if you need to. Have a place where you can go back to it so that when you when you're getting stuck in your mind and you think you don't have any know what else to do, you can look at your list when you're not in crisis yes. to be able to say, "I can do this." You can also pick some friends of whom you could call or trusted people or phone numbers. Write at least three down because not everybody's available at that time. And funny enough, there will. Be And some people call that the dark night of the soul where it's just seems dark. And I've had that too. And from that, I, I wrote out, although I see no light, uh, although, yes, although I, I know that there's a light at the end of my tunnel, mm -hmm. although I see, that's what it is. Although I see no light, I know there is a rainbow at the end of my tunnel. The rainbow being the symbol of hope uh, that God identified as the thing that he would not do, that there will always be hope. So that was my my way of encouraging myself. We have Imani on here, who is an author of Root Work, uh, Triumph Over Trauma. Um, we got things we can do. You have the resource of compassionate listening. Uh, what else can we do? You can come back. Follow our channels. All right, and continue to meet with other like-minded, like-hearted individuals. Go to Love and Lightens shop. <laughs> Love and Lightens, where we share messages of love to others. Get an ex ex share messages of love to enlighten the soul. Get a T-shirt. You're going to see love, and you're going to help cause a global heartwarming. We plant three trees um, with our partner Trees for the Future for every t-shirt purchase and you're going to be able to bless those seeds with the love that you wish to grow in the earth. And that's how we're going to populate oxygenate love. So we thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Shermel for being thank here. Having me. Thank you. And thank you I all. Like all the comments, but I can't. So uh, thank you yes. that have commented and who joined in and participated. We appreciate it. Well, let me share a couple before we go to this. You ladies are incredible. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. That's from Sheila. Uh, we got uh, from Little Women Speaks. Thank you both for your transparency. Leslie with Let's Go says, amen. She's in agreement. Imani said, thank you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We're all, 
we all are says how uh, your honesty is courageous and beautiful oh thank you so much ah leslie you saw coco in the background yes so um if we are i'm pretty i'm pretty full and empty I'm how about you yes i'm complete. perfect <laughs> then it is done. It is completed. Thank you all. Be blessed. Be love. And share love. Yes. Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>